Welcome back to chapter four. In part three, we're going to continue our discussion on writing formulas and naming ionic compounds. But in this one, we're going to look at those transitional uh, metals that don't follow our rules all the time and how we can actually figure out what the charge is on them. So the metals in this, in this category um, have multiple charges that are that we call that multivalent, which means that the cations can form um, one or more, two or more charges. Um, examples of that are iron. Okay, iron is one that we see a lot, and iron can be either a plus two or a plus three, and it just depends on the situation and what it is actually. Um, connecting to, what kind of environment it's in, even if it's in an acid or a base and things like that. So in, if I write the formula like this, FeSO4, okay, I have a list of polyatomic ions and I know that SO4 is a two minus because I have a, I have a table. Okay, and if I add Fe to SO4, um, then I can tell what the charge is by looking at the formula. So in, so what I'm saying is, if this, if I know SO4 is always a minus two, and it only takes one iron to satisfy the positive part of that to make it zero, then iron would have to be a plus two. With me? Okay, because I have one of these, so I'm gonna look at it mathematically. One of the irons has got to be equal to a two. So X equals two. So that's the charge. In the second one, where I have Fe2, SO4, three, since I would have swapped and dropped these to figure this out, okay? Still, I know that there's always a minus two on my sulfate, and I have three of those. So two times three is six. This time, I have two irons. So two irons it must equal six. So the charge must be three, okay? So that must be a plus three. Why is this important? Because when I name this, I'm going to have to tell you that that's iron 2, and this one is iron 3. So I must be able to figure out what the charge is so that I can tell you the name. So if you go back and write the formula, you can write it correctly. So the way I tell you that is I put the charge in parentheses as a Roman numeral. So if I have copper 2 plus, it's copper 2. And copper plus 1 is copper 1. My iron 2 plus would be written as iron 2. And iron 3 plus, you guessed it, is iron three. Okay, so Cu2O would be copper one oxide. Remember because minus two and it takes two of these so that must be a plus one times two. Oxygen is always a minus two. It only takes one to be a two therefore its charge is two. With me? And that first one working it out mat with math um, you only you have two of two of these, right? Two coppers to equal the two charge. That's why the charge of each individual copper is one. So I still use the ide in the nonmetal, and so I've got I've got some of these metals that are that are um, the culprits in this that do have multiple charges or they're multivalent like chromium, like iron, cobalt, copper, tin, um, mercury, lead, and there, and there are some other. These are the main ones that we see, and so that's why you have to. Now, you might see something called chromic or ferric, okay, and when you see those, um, those are going to be the higher charge, okay, and, and you know, like you've seen before, like stannic is a plus four, 
but ferric is a plus three. So it, there's not a whole lot of um, logic to them. So that's why we don't, this is, these are common names. You don't, we don't use those, but you may see them written. So just so you'll know what it means. And then you can look it up and it'll tell you which charge it is. So CRBR3, if we're going to name that, okay, we're going to look at the total charge of the cation and the total charge of the anion, and they must equal zero. So chromium, I, chromium can be multivalent because it's one of those transitions. So, but bromine is in 7A, and bromine is a representative atom or element, so it's always going to be a minus one because it's in group 7A. So I have bromine, which is a minus one, and I have three of those. So that times three is a minus three, right? And then in the formula that it's showing me, I've got one chromium. So I have one chromium, so one X equals three. So the charge on that must equal three. So that's how I know that it's chromium three. So then I know that I'm gonna write it chromium Roman numeral in parentheses three bromide. This tells me what the charge is. I do not tell you how many bromines there are. I tell you what the charge is on the metal. All right, so now I've got SNCl2. Again, SN is a transition metal, so I don't know what it is, but I do know what chlorine is. Love it when you got those group 7As because they're minus one. And so ever how many you've got of them, that's the total charge on them. So you've got a minus one times two is a minus two. I've got one of these to equal two. So the charge is two. So that is a plus two. So then I'm going to write this as 10. And remember, 10 rhymes with sin. So SN. 10, 2, chloride. So 10, 2, chloride. One of the labs that we have, I'm going to show you in, in a minute here, are like doing this, it's almost like doing write-offs, okay? You're going to do this over and over and over again um, so you can get it right. Okay, so let's name PBCL4. PBCL4. The first question that I need to ask myself is, is when, when once I start mixing these together is, is this ionic or covalent? And how do I know it's ionic? Because it's gonna have a metal in it, a metal plus a non-metal, right? So I know I'm gonna name it by the ionic rules because if I name it, if I've, if I've got a covalent molecule, it's gonna be named differently, okay? So that's why we're learning these first. All right, so I know that PB is lead, and there are a few of these weirdos that you probably need to learn. Lead is one you're gonna see a whole lot. So PB, that comes from plumbium, because plumbers used to use lead pipes. So PB, so you got lead and you got chloride. Now, you know that chloride, which is in group 7A, so that's a minus one. So I have a minus one times four is a minus four. I've only got one lead, so one X equals four. So the charge on the lead must be a plus four. So I'm gonna name that lead four chloride. Now, if you don't know your Roman numerals, you need to go back and learn those, okay? And you need to know one through 10. And they use V's and X's and stuff like that, okay? All right, and then you're gonna name F-E-S and making sure that you put the correct Roman numeral in there for the iron. And then the last one, remember I told you rubidium is RB, and ruthenium is RU, okay? So you're gonna do RU4 oxide. 
So this this right here tells you that, that this ruthenium is a plus four. And you know oxygen is a minus two. So you should be able to swap and drop that, right? All right, and so that's how you handle naming and writing formulas for ionic compounds from transition elements.